Hi folks, so in this video what we're going to do is cover the short answer questions, the section A questions from the 2023 Leave Insert exam, the DCG paper higher level. As always with this, there is four questions on the paper and you're going to have to attempt uh, three of them to get your full marks, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with A1, onto A2, A3 and A4. So moving up here now to A1, just going to zoom in on that one there now, bring it into a little bit better focus on our screen. There we go. Out right there. Now, it says here the image on the right shows a tissue box. The opening at the top of the box is elliptical in plan. Um, then it says the drawing below shows the plan, incomplete elevation, and end view of a similar tissue box. The, per, uh, the position of a surface development of a surface A is also shown, so you can see that over here. Part A, complete the elevation. We have to complete the elevation. It's not fully complete here. And part B, complete a one-piece surface development of surfaces A and B. So you can see here, they've given us a pictorial, kind of showing us what the tissue box looks like, and they've given us an elevation end view, or sometimes called an end elevation, and a plan view here. And the only view we have to complete is the elevation. So you can see, clearly see we're missing this little curved portion here. And then part B, complete a one-piece surface development of surface A and B. So surface A is this front face, surface B is like the side face there. Okay, so clearly what's missing from this elevation is the curved section. Now, the only way we can do a curved section and this elliptical curved section is to break it up into little chunks. Okay, I'm just going to measure it there. And I'm going to measure in increments of five. I think that's probably the most appropriate because you can actually see if I measure from this point right here into the middle, that's exactly 15. So I'm going to measure in increments of, I'm not sure will I do five. I might actually go, I'm going to measure four millimeters in. It doesn't really matter. You can take random guesses and then 10. Now there are the two measurements I've done. So I've done four and then 10 in. And I'm going to do the exact same at the opposite side so I'm marking also in 10, because I want to keep my object symmetrical. I'm going to mark in the 4 as well. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do cuts there. Okay, so from those sections, I'm going to locate points on the curve. So just turn it this way, so you can see it a little bit better on your screen. So that's a cut section going up through it there. And somewhere up along that line is going to be this point here. Likewise with this one. Likewise with this one, and this one. Now those distances could have technically been taken from anywhere at all. Now what I'm going to find essentially is some cut points, okay, on my curved surface. Now remember, in the elevation, we're looking technically in this direction at the objects. We're only going to see that curve here at the front. We won't see the back one. So I'm only going to see this curved surface. So if I label those points now, I'm going to call that one one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now, one and seven have already been found, okay? So I see clearly have to find then two, three, four, five, and six. So two and six, you'll actually see, because I took them at the same measurements, measured in four, and then four from either side, and then 10 for the other ones, but you'll actually see they will be exact same points. So I'm gonna bring those lines across, just heavy it in a little bit more so it's clear on the screen. Likewise with the next one all the way to there and then number four will come across as well so it's quite a detail to draw on this one okay and now all of those are going to project up onto the end view 45 degrees 45 and 45 now, what I have to find is where that curved section here in the end elevation is like when we're looking in here, that curved section here at the front, the elliptical portion, is actually going to be somewhere up along this edge here. So now it's simply a case of bringing those points up. Once again, put it in as best I can so we can see it a little bit better. One, two, and three. Okay, and now that I've found the points on my end elevation, simple process of elimination, now I'm going to bring this all the way across to find the last few points. So from here, I'm going to the middle. This one. And this one. Okay, let's locate the points. If I was to label them, the top two points, 1 and 7, would have been up here. So I'm going to write 1, 7. Then the next two points were 2 and 6. 
so it's two comma six this one here three comma five and four is at the bottom so if i want to find those what if i follow four up that's where four is three and five here and here two and six here and here okay so now you don't have to use labels this is just for demonstration purposes in the video and now simply a case of sketching in that curve as best you can so take your time just do your best to be neat and tidy here so there's my curve now that i've got my curve i'm going to heavy it in so just switching up my pencil make sure it goes through all the points don't want to lose marks for accuracy Okay, and there we have the curved portion. So there we have it, complete the elevation, we've done that. Now what we have to do, it says here, complete a one-piece surface development of the surfaces A and B. So they've already given us the line here. You can see the line, they've labeled the points RS, the edge RS. Now that edge RS is a true length, okay, because in the plan view, it's resting on the ground. So there they have, they've already put in for us. They've given us R and they've given us S. Now. What we have to do is we have to complete um, the shape of A. And that will actually look like a trapezium because you can clearly see it's kind of going in at a little bit of an angle. Now, this here, I can't simply just take this distance here. That is not the correct distance, okay, to work it out. And the reason I can't actually take that is because that line there is not a true length. To make this object, I essentially need all true lengths, okay? I do have the true length of the top line, okay? I have the true length of that because the top line in elevation is uh, a horizontal line it's parallel with the xy line therefore in the plan view that there that line there is a true length going from this point here to this point here i do not have the true length of this line but what i can actually determine if you come over to your end view when we look at the object in the direction of the pencil if you imagine okay when i'm looking at that i can actually determine what the height is generally going to be okay now this is not the height here that's not the height of it but i can actually take the height from this line there that length right there because technically if i to look at this distance here from there to there i'm technically looking perpendicular to that when i'm looking in the direction of my end elevation which is this view over here and because i'm looking perpendicular to this edge here if you imagine there was a point here at the very very tip top i know there isn't one there but if we imagine there was okay and we had to remove that section well then technically that edge there that line would be a true length so i can take that line and that will help me determine the height that line there will help me determine the height okay because that is going to be the length from the bottom to the top so now i can mark that from the middle okay so i've taken that distance there and i can mark that from the middle not from the side but from the middle now that i've actually determined the height of it i can start to complete the drawing now that i've got the middle okay and i put that line in as I said previously, I do have the true length of this line looking down on top of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the distance from the middle. Because we marked it in the middle, I'm going to take that distance right there from the middle. And I'm going to mark it from the top in the middle to the left and to the right. And then simply connect that up. And that there will help us complete the development of our surface A. So there's our surface A. Obviously, we have to put in the um, curve portion now. So all I'm going to do is all these lengths here, okay, are actually true lengths. So from the middle, I'm going to mark these again. I'm going to just do my simple measurements. So I'm going to mark as far as the 1, which will be the same distance out to the 7. So up here at the top, from the middle, I'm going to mark out to the left and to the right. That technically would be the 1 and the 7. If I was to mark those again, 1. And seven. Now it's simply a case of finding two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm going to do the same thing with my measurements again. You can see I've got the measurements bang on. I'm going to measure in four as I measured over here previously. I could just take those distances with my compass, but I'm just going to use my set square to measure. So mark in four millimeters plus ten. So I've marked from this side. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Mark in back four millimeters and then ten. And then I'm going to do a line down 
a line down down and down okay now somewhere along this line is two three four five and six now where do i get those i can't simply just take them from here because they're not the true lengths in the elevation okay but i can take them from over here like we took our previous distance so if i want to get the distance for two and six i mark the distance from there i'm gonna adjust the light on my compass here just to bring it out a little bit further make my life a little bit easier so from the top i'm going to take the distance down to two and i'm going to mark it on the two like that and on the six one okay there's that one now i'm going to take the distance down to three and five exact same thing three five finally the last one the true length down to number four and do that from the middle and there we have it there's all our points so just to put little marks on those one two five you could number them again and i will just for demonstration purposes four six okay and now i'm going to sketch in that curve and this is the true shape of that surface so it's actually showing me the true shape of the curve okay now I'm just going to go over this a little bit heavier start bringing our surface A into a clearer focus so heavy into this one this one so there's that one and now surface B is actually connected onto it because it's a development there will be a dotted line there because that's where surface B is going to be connected onto it so that's surface A there now to get surface B essentially that's made up it's a triangular surface we've already technically got this edge here if I was just to heavy that in we've already got that edge okay now because of the object is symmetrical okay we can assume that this edge here and this edge at the back are the exact same length so that edge there and there'll be another edge out here so what i can actually do is because that edge is technically a true length from here to there somewhere out along that if i was to mark it out will be the edge of the opposite side and now we're just missing the line in here okay because that one there would have to be the same as that one okay now what we're going to do is we need to find the true length of the baseline is there anywhere on my object that i have the true length of the baseline yes there is okay i actually have two of them i could take this distance here in plan from there to there or i could take this distance from here to here in end elevation because it's in plan and it's resting on the ground therefore it is a true length so i'm going to take that distance in my plan view from there to there from point s up to here and from s i'm going to mark it out and where it cuts the curve i'm now going to draw it in so this here will identify to me surface b okay there we have it folks that there is the second part of question a1 complete the one piece surface development of surfaces a and b now the challenge uh, i suppose if you have a good understanding of orthographic you'll be okay with this the challenge we had was inside in this little section here for surface a was possibly at, i think at the very start determining the height of this okay and lots of people might make an error there okay now what we're going to do is we're going to move on then to a2 at the bottom of the page which is a conics problem so i'm just going to move my camera down there okay it says here the image below shows the ski jump from the 2022 winter olympics in beijing china the ski jump uh, slope is in the shape of a hyperbola okay so you can see the kind of the curve here uh, the drawing shows the axis aa1 so we've got the axis line which is running vertical we've got the directrix dd1 which is running horizontal axis and directrix will always be at 90 degrees to one another we've also got the focus f they've given us the position of the focus and incomplete edges m so obviously this needs to go higher and n this one obviously needs to go higher of a similar ski jump the hyperbola has an eccentricity of three is to two part a 
locate the line of eccentricity and vertex of the hyperbola. So they're kind of telling us what we have to do here first. And then part B, draw the portion of the hyperbola between the edges M and N and complete the ski jump. So I can't do B unless I've done A first. Now, what they've given us here is the line of eccentricity. Okay, the line of eccentricity will come okay and start where the axis and the directrix intersect and it's going to start right in here at this point and when we get the line of eccentricity we will then be able to determine uh, our vertex from uh, using our focus so to get the line of eccentricity they tell us that it's in the ratio of three is to two really important so what that means is okay because our line of eccentricity uh, for hyperbola is greater than one what we're going to do is i'm going to measure from point A down here, I'm going to measure up two centimeters to there. And after measuring up two centimeters along the axis line, I'm going to go out and I'm going to measure three. So that will give me my line of eccentricity. Okay, so this line here, I'm just going to draw it in there now. Now, that is my line of eccentricity. So all I'm going to put in is L O E. That is my line of eccentricity. You don't have to label it, but we've got it drawn. How did I get it? I simply use a ratio of trees to two. So basically what that means is I've measured up two parts here and I've measured out three parts. Up two, out three. I could have also measured up four and out six or up six and out nine. Okay, and we just keep increasing in that scale. That is our line of eccentricity got. Now, how do I get the vertex? The vertex is when we project back from the focus at 45 degrees okay and i say 45 degrees it's 45 degrees to the axis line and then where that hits the line of eccentricity which is right here at this point i'm going to drop that then down but in this case horizontal to hit my vertex or to hit my axis line and what we have now found and i would always label this that is v that is our vertex that is a point we should have put it down here actually that is a point on our uh, hyperbolic curve so, it's going to work out that one there. Apologies, folks. So, now what I need to do is actually, that's the first part. We've done the line of eccentricity. We've also got uh, the vertex. Now what I need to do is draw a portion of the hyperbola. So, to draw the portion of the hyperbola, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out in increments here, and I'm going to uh, put lines up until it hits the line of eccentricity. Okay? So, first of all, from the focus, step number one, I'm going to put in a line. Going horizontal in this case. That line is known as your lattice rectum. Okay, so I'll just write that in there. You don't have to label it. Just for demonstration purposes in this video, I am. That line is known as the lattice rectum. Now, from the focus, I'm going to measure up, based on the space I have here, I'm going to go uh, up in increments of 10. So, 5, 6, 7, 8, and I'll go up as far as the 9. I'm not sure if I need that. But, uh, and then I'll also do one on the inside. From the focus, I'll do one on the inside. There is, it's like there is kind of one done. I'll actually use that one, and I'll do another little one. So I'm going to just roughly guess one here. Okay? So you can see the little marks I've done. I've got one, two, one on the focus, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now, technically, the vertex is a point on our hyperbola. The lattice rectum line, where that intersects with the line of eccentricity, which is above the focus, or in this case, horizontally, that is also a point on my hyperbola, okay? So I've technically got two points. Now what I need to do is find a series of other points. So, method here is, um, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do all the ones on this side first. I'm going to bring the lines up until they hit the line of eccentricity. I'm going to drop them down here. I don't think I'll actually have to do many on the other side. At this point here, I think I'll just have to continue on here. And looking at it, I have a feeling I'm not going to end up using that one there. I'll actually just stop it the one I've done. I'm going to extend that on a little bit just to be able to get these lines to hit. Okay. Now, to find points on this hyperbolic curve, all I'm going to do is, for every one of these kind of uh, lines I'm after putting across horizontally, for every one of them hit the line of eccentricity, I'm going to drop them down until they hit the lattice rectum. Okay. So you can see here, let me do it this way. Drop this point down. This point, this point, there is another one out here. It's just about hitting in there. It's kind of hard to see there, okay, on the camera because it's nearly going into the image. Now, any ones that were going uh, on this side of the focus, I'm going to 
drop them horizontally across until they hit the line of eccentricity. And then instead of dropping them down, I'm going to bring them up. So I've kind of got two of them there brought up. And now the method is, at this point, everything is going to rotate about the focus. So if I go out to this one here, all the way this one, so if we go to the four cut out from here, all it is is where it hits the line of eccentricity from here, I'm going to bring my compass out to there, up to that point, I'm going to swing an arc, and technically, this point right out here would be a point on my hyperbolic curve. Now I'm going to go into the next one. Okay, there's another point. Into the next one, and I keep going in this sequence. There's another point. And then, got one here as well. Now, as I said previously, you can see the points we're getting. There is one here directly on the lattice rectum line. So I'm going to get the opposite side of that now. It may not appear on the page. So from there, if I wanted to find a point on the other side, you would simply extend it over. Okay, and you can see I've got it out here now, and it's going outside the line in, but I'm going to use that to guide me. Now, to get the ones here from the focus, I'm just going to, on all the other ones, we went up this way. When I go below the focus, or below the focus one where the lattice rectum, I'm going this way. Now that one there is very, very small. It's like right in there. It almost looks like it's on the line of eccentricity. And at the next one, probably get a little bit more of a clearer version. There we go. And you can see, I've got a point here. Okay. Now, on these ones here, I am going to find two further points. So I'm going to extend this out. And extend this one out. So from the focus, that one there. Make sure I get the correct distance again. So from that distance, I'll mark it here, but I'll also mark it on the opposite side. So I've now found that one. And the exact same with this one up here. Mark it on the opposite side. And this looks like it's hitting right there. Bang on the money. Okay. And you can see the series of points we're after finding. So now we're going to sketch in that curve. So all we want to do is from here, as best I can, I'm going to make sure I go through all the points. And there, and that, the, them ones there appear like they're very close together. Into the vertex. And from the vertex, it's going out the opposite side. And you try and make sure that curve is looking symmetrical. You can see here. And it's nice to have one on the outside to kind of guide you in the direction of where it's going. And because of... That I can now heavy in the line M. The line M will only go up as far as the curve. You can see where the curve is passing through. And I'll do the exact same with the line N. And now that I've done that, I'll sketch in my curve and heavy it in exactly. And that's the sequence of completing that question, guys. Nice little question there based on conics. Okay, so if you understood how to draw a conic inside in class, that question wasn't too challenging. The challenging part was obviously working out the line of eccentricity and possibly the fact that usually when these would have been drawn in class, you would have been drawing them. This one here is kind of, it's lopsided. Usually your axis line is going horizontal and your directrix is going vertical. Okay, but either way, if it's flipped, we should still be able to draw it. Okay, so here we have it. We're after drawing in um, the hyperbolic curve that is part B of the question done. Okay, and you can see here I didn't have it in beyond there and I didn't have it in beyond here. So now what we're going to do is moving up to question A3 at the top right of the page. And this question here is based on the oblique plane. So just move the camera a little bit further there. Right. Make sure that's in focus. Okay. So it says here, um, the image below shows the packaging of a Skellig's uh, chocolate, or for Skellig's chocolates. So you can see the Skellig's chocolates here. Uh, the shape of the package is based on a triangular prism. So we've kind of got an image then of the triangular prism over here, and we can see the pictorial. 
uh, with a rectangular label at the top. So we've kind of got this orange label here at the top in the shape of a rectangle. The drawing on the right shows the plan and incomplete elevation of a similar package. So we've got the elevation, we've got the plan here, but the elevation is not fully completed. Now, what it says is uh, determine the horizontal and vertical traces of the oblique plane that contains the surface A, B, C, D. So we've got the surface A, B, C, D, and we have to get the oblique plane or the vertical traces of that, the BTH. And then part B, complete the elevation of the label, uh, shaded area in plan, including all hidden detail. So you can see here, there's obviously a rectangle on the front surface, but there's obviously a little bit on the back. But what I should note straight away is when I look down top of the plan, the rectangle at the front, which is this guy here, seems to be coming down a lot further than the one at the back. And we're going to have to put in that detail as well. Okay, so starting off, determine the horizontal and vertical trace of the oblique plane uh, that contains the surface A, B, C, D. So A, B, C, D, okay, is this surface. We're not concerned about the surface at the back. We're just kind of concerned about the front face. Now, what we need to recognize is the oblique plane. Uh, what is that? Okay, so if I was to just do a little sketch here, excuse my sketching skills, but if I was to put in a little sketch there of essentially, now the sketch that I've done there, this is my HP and this is my VP. That's my vertical plane and my horizontal plane. And where they meet, we all know it as the XY line. Okay. Now, the oblique plane is a, a plane that is going to intersect those two faces, okay? And essentially, in this case, they're saying our oblique plane is A, B, C, D. So C, D, what we can recognize straight away is C, D is on the ground. So I'll just draw that in there. C, D is on the ground. So look, that's point D, that's point C. And then A and B are going up at a height, and they're obviously maybe tilted back at a little bit of an angle. Okay, so there's A and B up here. Now, what we need to recognize straight away is that CD, because it's on the ground, that's like our oblique plane here. That's our surface. Okay, CD is on the ground. Technically, then, that's straight away because that's where it's touching the ground and where it's touching the horizontal plane in this case. That line there, CD, is actually our horizontal trace. That is our HT. Okay, so really easy to find. So straight away, I can draw in my horizontal trace just by simply extending the edge CD because it's on the ground all the way up to hit the XY line. That is my HT. Okay, now that I've found the horizontal trace, it's quite easy now to find the vertical trace. Okay, all I need to use is a point A or B on that. Okay, and I can find a point on the vertical trace. So method here. Parallel to the horizontal trace, a little bit of sliding set squares, parallel to the horizontal trace from A or B, doesn't really matter, I'm going to do from A, to hit the XY line, and then from there, okay, it's like I drew that, and in the plan view, how does that appear? Well, A and B are on the ground, it's like I extended it up there, and then I'm going to bring it up, I'm going to bring A out and find a point on my vertical trace, okay? So what I'm going to do here now is from A in, sorry, where A hits the XY line, which is represented by the wall, okay, or which is representing the wall in the plan view, or I should say the vertical plane. I'm going to extend that straight up. And from A in elevation, all I'm going to do is I'm going to extend that out. And technically, that point there is then a point on my vertical trace. I'm going to draw that in. And there we have it. There is our vertical trace, BTH found. Okay. Now what we have to do, it says here, complete the elevation of the label, shaded area and plan, including all hidden detail. So essentially I'm trying to find this rectangle here. Now, there's kind of two ways you could do this. Okay. Uh, this could have technically been done without finding the BTH, but I'm going to use that method like we've just done here to find various points. So let's say if I was to break that up and I was to label it, um, let's say the point at the very tip top is one, two, and I've got a point here, three, and four. Let's say we're trying to find four points there. Well, one and two are really easy to find because one and two are at the top of the surface, okay? So they're easy to find. So simply a case of bringing those straight up. There's one, and there's two. If I was to label those, there's one, and there's two, okay? So now I just need to find three and four. So 
like the method that we just previously used, okay, this is where these questions can be a bit tricky at times because it all comes down to accuracy, okay, and the thickness of the lines. So three and four, I'm going to project it parallel to the horizontal trace. So it hits the XY line. Where it hits the XY line, I'm going to project it up to hit the vertical trace. Where it hits the vertical trace, I'm going to project it horizontally across so from here. Okay, and somewhere along that line is going to be points three and four. But the fact then, somewhere along that line, because we found the height of the line, now I can simply project up four and three. And technically now I've found my rectangle because that there is point number three. That there is point number four. Okay, now the other method, I will draw it in first, then I'll explain the other method. Now what you recognize is that they appear parallel and they should. So there is, there we go, there is the kind of orange section at the front of it. Now, the other method we could have done there was, if you look at 3 and 4, if I extended that out, I've actually found a point on the edge AD right here. Now, if I was to bring that up, this would be a true test of my accuracy, we'll see what it's like. So close I am. Yeah, I'm not too bad. So, sorry, just have to move there, guys, because the lights go out here. Now, what I could do, and this is a true test of my accuracy, if I extended out 3 and 4 until it hit the edge AD, which is this line here, at this point there, that point there should line up directly with this point, and we'll see, does it? And you can see it does. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. Maybe someone could have taken that and maybe it was here. So that's where I was saying a little bit of discrepancy can kind of come into these. So look, either method, if you did it, you probably would get the marks. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to find this one here at the back. But because we can't see it, we're going to be putting that one in as hidden detail. So I'm just going to stick with the same method that I've previously done. Okay. But once again, as I said, you could technically extend it out to the edge here and then bring it up. But I'm going to stick with the same method that I've previously done by extending it out using the oblique plane. And I'm going to extend out this one here. And there we go. And that one there. I better be careful here because technically, I need to be careful here, I apologize, because technically this one here, A, B, C, D, is associated with this oblique plane, that surface. This one actually isn't associated with that, so I have to be super careful there, actually. Apologies. I'm actually going to go back and do the method that I had previously just explained there. So imagine we have a surface A, B, C, D, and now I could also call this surface A, B. I'm not going to call it C, but I'll go to, uh, after D, I'm going to say E and F. So E and F are both on the ground, okay, so I've got E already, how would I find F? So to find F, bring it up, there's F, now I know F also connects to A, there's F, that also connects to A, draw that in, and then, technically, there'll be a bit of hidden detail there, because I'm not seeing that edge. Okay, and what I have to do now is on that surface, now because I've got the line A to F, and as I said previously, if I was to label this, so 1, 2, 3, 4, let's go with 1, 2, we'll call this 5 and 6. I'm trying to find the numbers 5 and 6. So edge 5 and 6 was extended on, and where it hits the line A to F, I will do it this way this time, where it hits it right there, I'm going to bring it up, and you can see it's hitting the line A to F roughly inside there somewhere. Okay, and at that height right there, I'm going to project it across. Okay, and somewhere along that line then is going to be 5 and 6. So simply then, from 6, I'm going to mark it up. And from 5, I'm going to mark it up. And there we go. So there is 6, and there is 5. And all we have to do now at this stage, this is hidden detail here at the back. It's like we have a label at the back, but it's not the same dimensions as the one at the front. So there's that one. That'll connect up to six. And two will connect up to 
Pois. There we go. Okay, that there is the hidden detail as I can see it on that drawing. Okay, so complete the elevation of the label, shaded area and plan, including all hidden detail. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, we have satisfied that brief. Okay, now we're going to move on to the last question at the bottom of the page, which is A4 based on intersecting planes. Now, here's the last question on the problem, okay, or on the page. It says here, the image below shows a sculpture based on intersecting triangular planes. So you've actually got three of them uh, in the image, but they've only obviously used two of them for the demonstration. They've used this one with this one. And what we have to do is, says, is the drawing on the right shows the incomplete plan and elevation of two of these intersecting planes. So they've given us one A, B, C, and D, E, F, or sorry, D, E, F, and they've given the plan view of it as well. So part A, draw the plan and elevation of the line of intersection between the two planes. Now, what we need to recognize is, where is the line of intersection? So use the graphic to help you. We can clearly see that the line of intersection is this line here. That's where the two planes are intersecting one another, okay, and they're overlapping. So how are we going to do that? Well, there's kind of two methods about it. There's a quick method and a long method. The quick method is the one I'm going to use. Uh, the long method is where we're going to have to use auxiliaries. But what we're going to use is simply what's known as a horizontal cutting plane. Now we're going to pick an appropriate point that is going to both cut, sorry, it's going to cut both surfaces, uh, ABC, the plane ABC, and the plane DEF okay at uh, points and somewhere where it cuts those then will be a point on the line of intersection and what's helpful here is technically the point d is actually has to be on the line of intersection the reason being is because d is on the line a b so that's actually a common point that would be on the line of intersections where if you look at the triangle here it's where it's meeting up here at the back okay that's like our point d this one up here would be b this would be a i've got obviously c here and then i've got uh, this is f and this is E, okay? So I'm trying to find that line there, and let's say we call it the magic point in there. Let's say that was X inside there. Okay, so how do I find X? What I'm going to do is, A is actually an appropriate point to take this from. I don't have to do it from A. I could do it in a random height that goes through all four, um, four lines, okay? But I'm going to use A because A is actually an easy point I can then work back to. So from A, I'm going to do a horizontal line. I'm going to use my green marker here. Okay. And technically, what I want to find is A is a point. Okay. And I've also found a point. I'm just going to focus on the plane ABC first of all. And then I'll get onto the plane DEF. But on the plane ABC, I now have to get this line, this green line in the plan view. I've got it in the elevation. It starts at A. I have to find where this point is. And clearly, that point is on the edge from B to C. So. What am I going to do? I'm going to bring it down to my plan view. Switch out pencil there. So it's on the edge from B to C. You can clearly see it's there. I'm going to draw that back to A. And once again, I'm going to use the green. Okay, now I've got the plan view of the line AC. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to find the plan view of this line in here. Okay, this point here is on the edge from D to F. So how do I find it? I find it by projecting it down. D to F. I've now found that point right there. And I put a little dot on it so I don't forget it. Okay, this point here is on the edge from D to E. So how do I find that? I'm going to drop it down. It's on the edge from D to E. Okay. And likewise, again, because it's a green line, I'm going to connect those up. Okay. Now, what we can recognize then is, technically, where those two green lines in plan view cross one another is a common point. That point there is a point that is technically on my line of intersection. Okay. So, therefore, because A, sorry, not A, D is also a point on the line of intersection, because I have two points on the line of intersection, I can now draw in my line of intersection. Once I have two points, I can actually draw the line. Now the question is, where does it finish? Now we'll go to the graphic here to find out where it finishes. It finishes on the edge from A to, and it's hard to see that there, the letter C. So it's going to finish on the line from A to C. So it's going to finish on this line. So from D, switch up my pen here. 
There we go. That there is my line of intersection. So I'm just going to write L O I. And you can see it goes right into there. That's like my point X that I was saying previously that I wanted a point. Now that I found that in plan, I also have to find it in elevation. So it's on the edge from A to C. Project it up. That's where it hits right there. Once again, I'm going to draw that in. L O I. Okay, step number one. Have we found a line of intersection? Yes, we have. Okay. Part B, determine the true shape of the plane DEF. Okay. Um, first thing we need to do is identify the plane DEF, and I can see it here in elevation, and I can see it here in plan. Next thing I need to identify is, is there any line on the plane DEF that is a true length in either view? Um, in the elevation, the line DF is not, an L, uh, is not a true length. The line DE is not a true length. And the line FE is not a true length. But in the plan view, the line FE, or E to F, however you want to call it, is a true length. And the reason being is because F and E are actually both on the ground. So therefore, because they're both resting on the ground in the plan view, when I'm looking down on top of it, that is actually a true length. So what we can use is, because we've determined that the line FE is a true length, what we can use is, we, if we look along that true length, we will then see it as a point view. And then by projecting that and getting x1, y1, we'll get the height for d. We will then see that whole surface, def, as an edge view. Really helpful. We always want to see, if we ever want to get the true shape of something, we nearly always need to see it as an edge view first. Okay, so de, project that out. I'm also going to project out f. Sorry, f and e is projected out. I'm also going to project out d. And I'm going to set up x1, y1, just out here. This is my x1, y1. Now, I projected from the plan. I'm therefore going to take my heights from the elevation. Now, the only height I need is the height for d. So I'm just going to do a line down there to d. I'm going to take the height from the x, y line up to d. I'm going to take that height from d, mark it out. And technically, I'm going to call that now d1. And what I've, because E and F are on the ground, technically, they both share the same position. This is now E1, comma, F1. Okay. And I'm going to draw in the surface DEF. Now, I'm seeing that surface there as an edge view. I'm seeing the whole triangle just as a line. Now, there's probably two ways we could go about this now. We could technically set up another auxiliary, an x2, y2, and just project out here, setting up an x2, y2, and take our distances from the previous x, y line back. Um, based on the size of it, I'd probably have to set up a datum, just reduce the space. Um, but the easiest method I think actually to do here is, because the x1, y1 is representing our ground, I'm just going to extend that line out, and we're going to roll back the surface down instead. Okay. And all I'm going to do is, E and F is like a hinge, and it's like I'm going to take D and rotate it until it's on the ground, and then bring it back and find it down here to get the true shape. So E and F is a hinge. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate. It's called rebatting. You can see it's kind of got out of my screen there, but it's come back in. And it's like I've rotated that all the way around. Okay, I'll put in another one, little one here. And now D is on the ground. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that back into the plan view. So parallel then with our projection lines. I'm going to project it backwards now. And then from D, I have to project out perpendicular. From D out here like that. And the angle in there is 90 degrees. What helpful here. I've now got D. I say D1, D. And there we go. If I connect this up to this, this up to this, that area inside there is the true shape of D, E, F. Okay? The other method, as I said, was we could have projected out looking perpendicular, set up an X1, Y1, or an X2, Y2 very close to the line D, E, F. 
lots of people like that method. And what you do is you take your distances from the X1, Y1 back, but more than likely what you could have done then was you could have reduced, see this big, big large gap in here before you get to any point on it. You could have put a datum line in probably on the E point and then got your true shape up here as well. Both methods work okay, but based on the drawing, I just decided to do it this way. So, storm the true shape of the plane DEF. Have we done that? Yes, we have. Okay, so there we have it, folks. That's the four questions complete. Just going to zoom out there now. Let's bring it back into a little bit better focus on our screen. Okay, so there was our four questions from the 2023 exam. Um, kind of nice actual questions, okay. This Connix one, nice enough, okay. Just the eccentricity line. This one is a little bit challenging for students just in the understanding of it. Um, a nice oblique plane problem question, and then we were given a bit of an orthographic with a surface development, okay. More than attemptable, and with lots and lots of practice of attempting all these questions, you should have been able to manage. Uh, you should be able, sorry, I should, you should be able to get on point with those, okay. So we have folks, hope you found that helpful, okay.